making a Stuart model steam plant part 28. After a bit of thinking and a small modification, finally the reversing gear works properly. This job ended up being much more difficult than I originally anticipated. And had I have known how long this was going to take, I would have made it into a separate series. In the next episode I'm going to show how to set the timing, and this will be part of a separate series. And when I make the playlist for it, I will include all of the episodes about fitting this valve gear. It just doesn't work. No matter what I do, wherever I move the reversing lever, I can't get the expansion link in the correct position at both ends. I've tried the bar onto which the reversing lever's mechanism clamps on both the top stud and the bottom stud. And no matter what I do, it will not work in this configuration. And to be honest, I really don't like hanging bits and pieces from the studs that are really only there to fasten the steam chest to the cylinder. To make this reversing gear work successfully and traverse the expansion link the full distance at both sides, this is where the part needs to be fitted. Exactly halfway up the steam chest, and besides which, when this component is fitted halfway up the steam chest, it looks better. And in this clip, you can see that the mechanism just clears the stud at the bottom, and this stud is currently a bit too long anyway. I've made a felt tip pen mark on the steam chest where I'm going to drill a hole. Well, no, actually, I've used the felt tip pen as marking out fluid. This reversing gear part needs to be fitted in exactly the right place, and it only needs fitting to the steam chest cover, halfway down the cover and equidistant between the edge and the Stuart logo. I drilled a hole in the steam chest cover, threaded it 7BA, then I used a 7BA stud to secure it to the cover. Please note, to hold the nut on the end of this short stud, I've used Loctite 243, which is a thread locker, not to be confused with Loctite 603, which is a retainer. Before fitting these parts, I rubbed down the front surface of the steam chest, using a piece of wet or dry sandpaper and it's very clear that the Stuart logo needs yet another coat of red paint. Here I'm applying the thread locker, and please note it is blue. Loctite 542, which is what I normally use to seal steam fittings, is red, and the super strength Loctite 603 retainer is green, so you can't really get them mixed up. So that's blue for thread locker, red for sealing threads, and green for high strength retainers. I'm leaving a short amount of time for the thread locker to cure before I test the system. The bottom of this rod has a nut fitted, in fact I'm fitting a lock nut as well, and this is the bottom stop, and as you can see, I can now traverse the expansion link, and it stops in exactly the right place relative to the valve rod, so this should be OK. The good news is everything is moving freely and continues to remove freely as I turn over the engine whilst moving the reversing lever up and down. I haven't yet fitted the parts that pull the expansion link to and fro. I'll do that very shortly. I just have the one loosely fitted in place to prove the concept, and everything seems fine. The time has come to remove this loose link and make the proper assembly at each side that's going to pull the expansion link to and fro. I spoke to Andy at Stuart Models and he said these parts are intended to be stuck onto the end of the bars. He recommended super glue, but I'm going to use Loctite 603. Hopefully this should be fine. There isn't much stress on these two bars that pull the expansion link from side to side. When you do this job though you have to be quick. Apply the Loctite 603 and quickly nip the parts together with a big pair of pliers. If you get it wrong, it's not the end of the world. You would have to remove the valve gear from the engine and just warm up the parts with a blowtorch. I don't mean warm them up until they're glowing red. You don't need much heat to make the Loctite give way. Here I'm fitting the second set of these fittings to the other side of the valve gear. And don't forget you need to be quick pressing them together before the Loctite grabs. Here it is, Loctite 603 retainer, clearly coloured green. A gentle squeeze with a big pair of pliers at each side completes the job. All I need to do now is just let some time elapse for the Loctite to cure. 
Look at the tolerance between the top of the expansion link and the bottom part of the valve fork, it's absolutely 100% bang on. If you're fitting valve gear and the valve fork fouls the expansion link, you have a big problem. You will need to round the end of the inside of the valve fork using a file so this doesn't happen. And that's it, the valve gear is fitted and the valve gear is working. A gentle test by hand to make sure nothing breaks off or drops off and it's time for an air test. Is it going to work? I would normally engage smug mode and say, well of course it is, but it's not working properly, this is the only movement I can get, in one direction only, applying air to just one of the cylinders, applying air to the other cylinder doesn't do anything. Why is this you may be asking, well I was just lucky the valve is in the right place to allow rotation in just one direction. The reason for this is I have not set the valve timing at all. The eccentrics are roughly in the right position, but the valve in the steam chest isn't. The next episode will be not part of this series, as I mentioned earlier. It will be called How to Set Up the Reversing Gear of a Stuart Models 1010V so that it runs in both directions. And that's it for this episode. I'll leave the steam engine running till the end of the video. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.